Shout out to the Most High Yah by way of Yahoo Shah Hamashiach, John 5, 39. It says, Search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. And you will not come to me that you might have life. I receive not honor from men, but I know you, that you have not the love of Elohim in you. I come in my Abba's name, and you receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, him you will receive. How can you believe which receive honor one of another, and seek not the honor that come from Elohim only? Do not think that I will accuse you to Abba. There is one that accuses you even more, to whom you trust. For had you believed Moses, you would have believed me, for he wrote of me. But if you believe not his writings, how shall you believe my words? Exodus chapter 25 and 1. This is offerings for the tabernacle. This is the tabernacle we're talking about. And Yahuwah spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Yasharal, that they may bring me an offering of every man that give it willingly. With his heart ye shall take my offering. And this is the offering which ye shall take of them gold and silver and brass, and blue and purple and scarlet and fine linen and goat's hairs, ram skin dyed red, and badger skin, shit and wood, oil for light, Spices for anointing oil and for sweet incense. Onyx stones and stones to be set in the ephod and in the breastplate. And let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them. According to all that I show thee after the pattern of the tabernacle and the pattern of all the instruments thereof, even so shall ye make it. What we're going to focus on this evening is verse 6. Oil for the light. We will look at the word oil. We here for the oil. For the light. Oh, for the light. Give me a second. I'm sure. So, the word oil. If I can actually get to it. It's Shemin. We have the Shan, we have the Mean, and we have the Noon. The Shan, the Mean, the Mem, the Mayim, whatever, or the Noon. So what do we get from that? We get uh, the oil consumes the blood of the seed. We also have it destroys you destroy chaos with the seed and also that a pair are mighty powerful force so we will try to look at a couple of things from each of those said things and uh yeah so the first thing that we're going to look at is a uh, Revelation 19 and, and, and 10. Revelation 19 and 10. Just don't get too man. There we go. Make it Revelation 19 and 9. Well, 19 and 7 is cool. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him. The marriage of the Lamb has come, and his wife hath made herself ready. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white. For the fine linen is the righteousness of the Kadeshim. He saith unto me, Bite Baruch are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he saith unto me, These are the true sayings of Allahim. And I fell at his feet to worship him. And he said unto me, See thou do it not. 
I am thy fellow servant and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Yahusha. Worship Elohim, for the testimony of Yahusha is the Ruach of prophecy. So we know the testimony of Yahusha is the breath of prophecy. Hold on one second. Let me see something real quick. Just real quick. Second Chronicles 9 29 is where we gotta pull this word from. Bum. And bum. And that the Hebrew word for prophecy is Nuova. So just keep that in mind. We'll probably take a look at that. I'll take a look at that because that word is only used in three spots. So, nevertheless, we know the Lamb was slain from the foundation of the world. Since we know that the Lamb was slain from the foundation of the world, we're going to have to turn around and we're going to look at how if the oil is for the light. We're not looking at the light right now. We're just looking at the oil. The oil to get to the light. There has to be a consumption of the blood of the seed or consumption of the seed so period you know what i'm saying so we have to look at that if the lamb was slain from the foundation of the world we have to look at that we, we could no we're not going to take the general general aspect let's go to genesis chapter 20, 30 30 Genesis chapter 30. Thirty and twenty-two. Now we know that Rachel, firstborn son, was Joseph. There's a reason why we're looking at this. Thirty and twenty-two. Elohim remembered Rachel, and Elohim hearkened to her, and opened her womb. And she conceived and bare a son, and said, Elohim have taken away my reproach. She called his name Joseph. Yahuwah shall add, uh, add to me another son. So Rachel's firstborn son is Joseph, and his name means that Elohim has taken away my sin. The reason why we're looking at this as being important, and y'all willing it would be manifest in a short, in a short, short season. If we're looking at that, do you have to consume the blood of the seed to get this oil in order to manifest light? Uh, we have to look at what happened to Joseph. Now, because we're in the abridged version this evening, we know what happened to Joseph. He was consumed. He was consumed of his brethren. Being forth that he was consumed of his brethren, he was able to bring forth all the light to the whole realm of Egypt. Most of us are all familiar with the story. So that's why we're taking an abridged version of it. But we came here first to establish that Joseph was the firstborn son of Rachel. We know from the 37th chapter of Genesis that his brothers conspired against him to consume him. So we could see how he would be the Sean in this instance, or the Shin, because he was consumed. We could also turn around and see the blood as, let's look at the, let's just go look at Genesis 37. Let's just do that. We'll pick this up by 37, uh, 21. And Reuben heard it and he delivered him out of their hands and said, let us not kill him. Reuben said unto them, Shed no blood, but cast him into this pit that is in the wilderness, and lay no hand upon him, that he might rid him out of their hands to deliver him to his Abba again. Came to pass when Joseph was coming to his brethren, that they stripped Joseph out of his coat, his coat of many colors that was on him. And they took him in the pit and cast him in the pit, and the pit was empty. 
and there was no water in it. And they sat down to eat bread, and they lifted up their eyes and looked. Behold, a company of Ishmaelites came from Gilead with their camels bearing spicery and balm and myrrh, going to carry it down to Mishraim. Yehuda said unto his brethren, What profit is it if we shall slay our brother and conceal his blood? So see, at this point right now, they are conspiring and planning to consume this seed. Now we know that Joseph is the the son of his old age, the, the father, the son that, that Jacob loved the most because he was the firstborn child from the woman that who he loved the most, which would be Rachel. But what we're looking at with this oil is, is the, the consumption, because oil brings forth, you need the oil to make light. We see that Joseph would be representative of the oil to be able to bring forth to make light. We know that he brought forth light because he brought forth light and make manifest what the dream of Pharaoh really was about and therefore he was able to save many souls alive because of this we're just using an example of what we're looking at in the law you know and we're just trying to set ourselves up so let's take this here to Mashiach and let's go to Matthew chapter 16 hello what's that We look at Matthew chapter 16 and verse 21. From that time forth began Yahushua to show unto his disciples how he must go into Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised again the third day. Then Peter took him and began to rebuke him, saying, Be it far from thee, master, this shall not be unto thee. But he turned and said unto Peter, Get thee behind me, Hashatan, thou art a fence unto me. For thou savor not the things that be of Elohim, but those that be of men. Then said Yahushua unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his stake and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it, and whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. For what is a man profit if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Now, Let's look at that, right? Pause. Micah chapter 6, because he asked a question. What could a man give in exchange for a soul? And you know, and this was mentioned in Micah. What can you give in exchange? And after we look at that, we can look at Psalm 49. What can you give in exchange? Because we're looking at, you know, the consuming of, this, uh, of the blood of the sea. We sat back and we seen that Joseph's brothers sought to consume his blood or consume that seed. That's what they sought to do. If I can get to Michael. Come here, Abigail. I see you over there, Abigail. Come here, Tabby. Man, God. Look. That book didn't want to show himself. Uh, six and six. Michael six and six. Where well, shall I come before you who and bow myself before the high Elohim? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings with calves a year old? Will you who will be pleased with thousands of rams or with ten thousand rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? He hath showed thee, O man, what is good and what doth Yahuwah require of thee, but to do justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with that Elohim. He done showed you what you ought to do. He said, should I give him rivers of oil? Should I give him the consumption of the, uh, the blood of the seed? That's that what I should do? Will he be happy with that or will he take that? Or put it in trash. Think about that. What can you give him? Because he said, what can a man give in exchange for a soul? Psalm 49.
49 and 5. Make it 49 and 4. I will incline my ear to a parable. I will open my dark sayings upon the harp. Wherefore should I fear in the days of evil, and the iniquity of my heels shall compass me about? They that trust in their wealth and boast themselves in the multitude of their riches, none of them can by any means redeem his brother, nor to give to Elohim a ransom for him. For the redemption of their soul is precious, and it ceases forever, that he should still live forever and not see corruption. He said you can't offer the Most High nothing for your soul, so what can you give in exchange for it? You can't give anything in exchange for it. Because it ain't nothing that this man wants. Say it's precious. Let's look at the word precious real quick. He says precious and it ceases forever. And that word is your car. It's something that's prized. It's something that is valuable. Costly. It's a great cost. So this is why he said there's, there's nothing that you can give that is of this world that you can exchange for. So that means so you're looking at to be able to produce this oil for light. And we'll talk about the light aspect of this. Y'all will on the Shabbat. But we're just looking at the oil. To get to the oil, this the seed of life has to be consumed for us to get into this oil. His blood has to be consumed. Or basically, he has to be destroyed. His blood has to be shed. This is what happens, has to happen to the seed in order for you to get this oil. This is what has to be done. Because this oil is for light. And this oil is for the light in the tabernacle, in the temple. So in order to produce this light in the tabernacle of the temple, the seed of life, the blood, must be shed. This is what has to happen. This is what has to happen. So let's look at it again. We've seen what Mashiach spoke of what was to occur unto him. And Matthew. So now we're going to turn around and we're just going to go straight to Acts chapter 3. We know that Yahushua was killed, so for time's sake, we're not going to pull a multitude of different uh, examples and things of that nature. And after we read Acts 3, we go to Acts uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2. And after we read 1 Corinthians chapter 2, we go to Ecclesiastes chapter 9. We're going to 1 Corinthians 2 and about verse 3 or 4. We're going to Ecclesiastes about 9 and 5. Acts 3 and 14. Or 13. Say the Elohim of Abraham and of Isaac and of Jacob and the Elohim of our fathers have esteemed, esteemed his son Yahusha, whom, uh, whom you delivered up and denied him in the presence of Pilate. We were determined to let him go. But you denied the Kadash one and the just and desired a murder be granted unto you and killed the prince of life who Elohim have raised from the dead whereof we are witnesses. Now, Acts chapter 5 tells us about uh, what? It tells us how that we slew Yahusha on a tree and that Elohim appointed this man to be a prince and a savior and to give repentance for sins so in order for oil to be produced now let's go to John 7 37 well let's not do that first let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 2 let's just take it let me just take it in the order of what I pronounced 1 Corinthians 2 and 3 well, when we looking at what we just looked at was Peter telling the people that they had killed this just one or the seed of life's blood was consumed or they consumed him, they killed him but in doing this they were able to produce the oil the oil which is needed to bring forth the life so in order to get to the oil there has to be a sacrifice to get to the light there has to be a sacrifice and if you remember if you remember 
when we began in the first verse of this chapter that the oil was an offering and it was an offering that was done willingly hold on hello hello this is t-mobile calling with information regarding the business account for Dwayne bond and cleaning service is this it Killing me, man. Jeez. So yeah. So yeah. So where we at? Where we at? Where we at? So with the oil having to be sacrificed or to be offered, this is what brings forth uh brings forth the light. This is what brings forth the light. Is the oil, and remember that the oil was being brought as a free will offering. It was a free will offering. A free will offering. So here we go. Let's come over here to Ecclesiastes 9 and 5. Please ask nine and five. It's nine and eight that we want. It says, Let thy garments always be white, and let thy head lack no ointment. Let's look at this word for ointment. Let's see what we get for that. That's a little different. We probably shouldn't have took that direction. No, 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 no. It's still the same word for oil, though. So, when he's telling you to not let your head lack any ointment, you shouldn't, your head shouldn't lack that sacrifice or that sacrifice being in your mind. Let's look at 1 Peter 4 and 1 and then go to John 7, 37. So your head shouldn't lack any ointment. So the Shaman or the Shaman, the Mem and the Noon, turn around looking at the, the consuming of the seed of life, it says the blood or the consuming of the blood of the seed of life, how you want to look at it. It's the sacrifice which is able to bring forth the light with this oil, which the oil was an offering for the tabernacle. That they were bringing for the light. That the people had to bring willingly of their own accord. Let's look at, uh, I know what I want, man. Oh, first Peter 4 and 1. Say, for as much then as Mashiach hath suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourself likewise with the same mind, for he that suffered in the flesh hath ceased from sin, that he should no longer live the rest of his time in the flesh to the lust of men, but to the will of Elohim. So if your head is not lacking any ointment, you're not lacking any oil, or you're not lacking that sacrifice, you have brought it to mind, you have that helmet of faith on, you remember the sacrifice, and therefore you're not lacking. So we had a discussion about this last night of which I, I will wait. I'm not going to mention it now. I'm going to mention it when everyone is in person. It's John 7, 37. John 7, 37. Give me a second. It says, in the last day, that great day of the feast, Yahushua stood and cried, saying, 
If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believe on me, as the scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. But this spake he of the Ruach, which they which believe on him should receive. For the Ruach HaKadosh was not yet given, because that Yahusha was not yet esteemed. Now, why is that important? The Ruach was given unto Yahusha, or the oil for the light. So because remember he said, in him was light, and the light was the life of men. What was able to make that light come about was him being consumed or the sacrifice that he was going to make. What is going to make that light be manifest in your inward parts is the sacrifice that you're going to make. Which is why we read that in Matthew 16 where he says that uh, about taking up your stake. That if you don't do that, you're not worthy of him. So this is what you will recall when you... Your head is not lacking any ointment. Let's come over here and let's look at the next thing that we would look at. And the next thing where we could look at for the aspect of this oil. So understand something, right? And this is a threefold thing what we're looking at. And I'm just moving kind of fast, just to be honest. The seed was consumed, which brought forth his blood. That seed being consumed, bringing forth the blood, is what brought forth the atonement of sins, which brought about the Ruach HaKadosh. Which brought about the light or the or, or the salvation or the deliverance from death of which we all desire. Because he said, Arise thou that sleepest, and Mashiach will give thee light. So when we take that into account, when we take that into account, uh what do we begin to understand and see? Now we look at the next thing, which is you have to destroy chaos with the seed. How do we destroy chaos with the seed? For time's sake, I want you to sit back and look at this. Pay attention to what I'm about to say. We know that Shalom has destroyed the authority attached to chaos. We know that sin brings forth chaos. We know from Luke chapter 8 and 11 that the seed is the word of Elohim. So we see that the, the seed or the word, and we know that Yahusha with the word made flesh, and not seeds of many, but seeds of one, that seed being Mashiach. You know what I'm saying? Is what will you, you'll use to destroy the chaos. So the oil has to destroy the chaos. In order for you to destroy the chaos, you have to use the word. Where can we see examples of this? We can see the word or the seed destroying the chaos in Mishraim. We can see this happening with Lot and, and Sodom and Gomorrah. Because that word destroyed the chaos that was occurring there. They were giving themselves over to strange flesh. They were committing fornication and idolatry. And that seed and that word destroyed that chaos. And it removed sin from amongst it. But I want y'all to sit back and we look at that naturally. And then understand how I'm going to play this spiritually. And I'm just mentioning you these specific things first. Before we're going to delve with the stuff in the spiritual. Reading the text. We're just going to overview the stories right now. When we look at the destruction of Mishraim, and it was the seed or that word that destroyed that chaos. What was that chaos? It was oppression. It was bondage. It was uh, it was idolatry and things of this nature. Uh, when we look at the seed destroying chaos, we look at that word destroying Nebuchadnezzar. And what did it destroy with Nebuchadnezzar? We will read about that. Daniel chapter 4 and verse 35. Daniel 4 and 35 
It said, uh, I'm in verse 34. At the end of the days, I, Nebuchadnezzar, lifted up my eyes unto Shamahim, and my understanding returned unto me. I baruch the Most High and praise and honor to him that live forever, whose dominion is an everlasting dominion, and his kingdom is from generation to generation. All the inhabitants of the rats are reputed as nothing, and he do according to his will in the army of Shamahim. Among the inhabitants of their rats, none can stay his hand or say unto him, What do thou? At the same time, my reason return unto me in the esteem of my kingdom and my honor. And my counselors and my masters sought unto me, and I was established in my kingdom, and excellent majesty was added unto me. And now I, Nebuchadnezzar, praise and extol and honor the king of Shamahim, and all whose works are truth and his ways are judgment and those that walk in pride he is able to abase the chaos that was going on in nebuchadnezzar was his pride he used that very same word to destroy that chaos in him humbled him and brought him down humbled him and brought him down now we mentioned pride we mentioned idolatry and oppression and we also mentioned uh lusts of the flesh lasciviousness if you will fornication and giving yourself over to strange flesh so in order to destroy that chaos to be able to get light from said oil you will have to allow the word to do just like we read in first peter 4 and 1 to destroy that chaos that seed has to destroy you have to destroy that chaos with the seed so let's look at romans 8 and 1. He said, this is their, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Yahusha HaMashiach, who will not after the flesh, but after the Ruach. For the Torah of the Ruach of life in Yahusha HaMashiach have made me free from the Torah of sin and death. So we now we see the seed, because Galatians tell you not seeds of many, but seeds of one, that seed being Mashiach. That seed is what destroyed the chaos, which destroyed death and sin, that oil. Which makes a lot more sense why you see, of course, him being anointed with oil and his head not lacking ointment. But that's another conversation. For what the Torah could not do and that it was weak through the flesh, Elohim sending his son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin condemned sin in the flesh. That the righteousness of the Torah might be justified in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the Ruach. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the Ruach, the things of the Ruach. So... Again, if you're looking at this oil that's going to produce this light, this oil must destroy the chaos. Or the seed will destroy the chaos that exists within you. Yahusha is going to destroy this chaos. But you have to allow the word to rest in there to be able to do so. You have to allow the word to dwell in there to do so. If we don't allow it to do so, then it will not destroy the chaos and you will not have rest. That's why I say, come unto me, all ye that are heavy laden, I will give you rest. The word can destroy the chaos that is within you. When Paul stated in Romans 7, you know, about how the, the flesh seeks, to, there's no good thing in it, and it's this, that, and the third. But he said, but I delight after the Torah of Allah, after the inward man. That's why he sat back and said it condemned sinful flesh in the flesh because that same word, that same seed destroys that chaos. When, that therefore, it can bring forth light because you need oil for light. Without the oil, you can't get the light. Without the oil, you can't get the light. So without the sacrifice or the first thing we looked at, you can't get no oil. So therefore, there ain't even no sense to talk about having no light because we know Elohim is light and no part darkness. So then if you're sitting back looking at if you want to get to the light, then you have to allow that same sacrifice. You have to allow that same word to destroy the chaos that is within you, to subdue your flesh. He said the Ruach is willing, but the flesh is weak. You must allow to bring every thought into captivity of Mashiach. You must allow that word to subdue you. You must be able to submit to it, to yield to it, to destroy the chaos. Paul wrote in Ephesians to the epistle and to the Ephesians about how. You need to renew your mind according to the new man. 
that was created in true Kadesh. You need to renew your mind. And that's what we don't do. So therefore we're not subduing. So therefore we're not yielding. So therefore we won't bring forth any light. The light will be impossible to attain to. Let me look at one more conclusion for that. Which do we want to use? Which do we want to use? And then of course the last thing that we'll look at is how two are joined or two are powerful joined to an unstoppable spirit or unstoppable motion how you ever want to do it. Because once this occurs that you've allowed the seed to destroy the chaos which was the byproduct because of the consuming of the blood of the seed or the sacrifice of the seed which brought forth the ability of the seed to destroy the chaos because now he can subdue sin in your mortal body because of it uh, it allows you to be joined to power the power of the unstoppable Ruach of Elohim so yeah I'm trying to look at I'm trying to think on what other example we want to use of that destroying the chaos let me come over here to 1st Timothy chapter 3. But again, and then we have another aspect with the seed destroying the chaos. But I have to say that for the Shabbat when I have enough time to actually lay that out. But before we look at 1st Timothy 3, let's go to 1st Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 9. Because what just came back to my mind is what I mentioned a four times. Uh, and that's 2nd Corinthians. That don't help Because like I say what we mentioned. Sodom and Gomorrah. That seed destroyed that chaos. That word destroyed that chaos. That was going on because of the giving over the strange flesh and fornication. That seed destroyed the chaos that was going on in Mizraim behind the oppression. Because you know the book says surely oppression make a wise man mad. And that Yahusha went about healing those who were oppressed of the devil. And also you had idolatry going on in Egypt. Then we also look at that seed It was another one, I can't remember what it was We could look at that same seed if we were to pull out certain kings of Israel destroying the chaos Ahab to be specific The chaos that he had going on with killing the prophets and causing Yasharal to follow after Baal and he sent forth a word to destroy him. At first Kings 22. Son a word in all the mouth of his prophets. So that he could go up to Ramah Gilead and die. So he could be able to destroy that chaos that Ahab was uh, bringing about. So when you look at the oil. There's three different aspects of we looking at this oil. The first one is, is that Yahushua had to be sacrificed. His sacrifice that 